Wow. Just wow. To be honest, when I initially started to do some research about the most popular Linux distributions besides Debian, my go-to distribution since I already know it, Fedora was one of those distributions that turned me off right away. But why? I don't know really. One of the reasons I remember that was off-putting to me was that it wasn't based on Debian. So I always thought if I were to start with Linux as my daily driver, then I should already choose a distribution that's related to something that I already know. It's the little things that count. I've already been quite familiar with Debian's package manager, the huge repositories with dev packages, the stability, and of course, the really awesome and really big community. Because of the well-known stability of Debian, many different derivatives emerged from it. Ubuntu, Deepin, PopOS, Elementary OS and Linux Mint are just some of the many popular Debian-based distributions and their popularity provides many forums and guides that can help you if you have any questions. But Fedora does not fall far behind. I literally had no idea how big the Fedora community is. And the fact that it's based off Red Hat, which is now known as Red Hat Enterprise, a distribution built towards businesses means that it is really stable as well. Fedora, in contrast to many other distributions like Debian, sets itself apart by having so-called rolling releases. What that means is that instead of freezing the software packages, whereas only bug fixes get applied for the next big release, Fedora keeps updating the software up until the release. The biggest advantage to this is that the programs are far more newer than on other distributions, but you are sacrificing a bit of stability for it. Arch does this, by the way. Now, Fedora does not include the newest software right from the start, but has a slight delay of approximately 10 weeks. This is nowhere near Debian testing, for example, which has a freeze cycle of up to half a year. And the software included in this release was already heavily tested. So not even everything is up to date when the freeze happens. So Fedora is much better when it comes to updates. Yeah, I switched to Fedora, but why did I when I like Debian so much? Well, to be honest, the reasons are just rolling releases and also the installation process. I installed Fedora on my testing laptop last week and to be honest, it was the easiest installation experience I've ever had, period. Another thing that Fedora offers in contrast to Arch, for example, is the option for secure boot. I know secure boot is hated by the Linux community, but if you have Windows games that are not yet compatible with Linux and they have an anti-cheat, then you might need to have it enabled. Both Faceit and Valorant need secure boot to be enabled on Windows 11. And I just don't want to go into the UEFI every time I boot into Windows. So if you don't play competitive games at all, then this issue does not bother you at all. But for me personally, it's essential. Another thing that bothered me for a while now were the updates on Debian. Now, I'm not on Debian stable. I am on Debian testing, which means I'm currently testing the next big release of Debian, Debian 12, Bookworm. Debian testing already has GNOME 42, but it's not that simple because it's getting pieced together over time. For example, I already have GTK4 support on some apps and GNOME tweaks even shows me legacy options. The main settings, however, are not yet updated. The same applies for the desktop session, whereas the default is now Wayland instead of X11 on NVIDIA. But right now, it's not. Fedora is way quicker on updating desktop environments. And the fact that it's more official than Debian testing just makes it so much better. Also, I really like the GNOME default experience which was also one reason why I choose Debian over other distributions like PopOS. Back when I installed Manjaro, the first thing I did was to clear out everything I didn't like, which frankly were a lot of extensions and programs. Fedora 36 comes with GNOME 42 right out of the box, without any extensions pre-installed, except their watermark of course. That is really cool, because you already have GNOME, which is a very solid desktop environment as of itself, but also a base canvas where you can build upon. I also enjoy the way how you install software on Fedora. Even though I've mostly used Debian's app to install software previously, Fedora's DNF is very similar and simple to use. Pac-Man, for example, was one of the things that really bothered me about Arch, because you have to add some weird parameters. I mean, it's nothing crazy, but why? I don't want to talk anyone down. If you enjoy it, then that's great for you. It's just my personal opinion and 
I just don't like it. Don't let anyone talk you down. So, let's wrap it up. My Fedora experience was basically flawless. I didn't really have to do anything at all to get it back to the same experience I had my Debian installation on, which is kind of insane. The installation process was so fast and simple. It actually makes me wonder why Fedora isn't the default when it comes to recommending Linux distributions to newcomers. Many Linux YouTubers out there say that Fedora is the new Ubuntu by providing a solid, easy to use experience while not being too outdated. And I 100% agree with that. Fedora is just really awesome. And that's where I leave it. Before this video ends though, I want to make a quick note that I have a ton of new Linux videos planned, where we go finally in a bit deeper into optimization and features. So definitely make sure to like and subscribe. If you want to know more about my initial experiences with Linux as my daily driver, then just click on one of these videos. Otherwise, all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are. I'll see you around.